Good day, creative friends. I hope you're doing well. So today I'm going to show you how I create what I like to call variegated backgrounds. It's a lot of fun. Basically what I do is I mix a bunch of colors, very light applications of a color at the beginning, and then I gradually build up but I'm not looking into filling out the whole space. Usually I do this when I want to overlay something simple over top. Let me show you what I mean by this. I have a number eight round brush and I'm gonna start by adding a bit of Titan Buff and I'm gonna make sure I have plenty of water. A good way for me to break the paper, <laughs> as I like to call it, is just tap some color and that usually gives me a good starting point. So what I do next is I propagate that color and I work in small sections at a time. Again, not looking into filling in all the space. I like to leave quite a bit of white. And I'm just randomly carrying that color. Sometimes I tap the color in like I'm doing here little tapping motions and then sometimes I like to charge my brush with lots of water to create uh, not exactly puddles but a fairly large amount of water and then I can just pick up some more color and tap that in see where the color is going to go so it's basically doing some sort of a random a random painting How's that? I don't know how to explain it. And it's a gradual build. It's not something that can be rushed. You could start, if you want to, you could spray some paper on, uh, some paper. You could sp spray some water on your paper. I'm gonna slowly build in more of an intensity here. Maybe drop it down. You could also tip your board if you've taped your work on a board and let some of those these colors drip. I like to tap as well just to create a fun movement on your piece I like that. Next I want to add a bit of Blue Appetite Genuine because I've already determined that would be my second color for the background. I'm looking for little opportunities to propagate the color. Even let that drip. Let me just add a bit of water, more water here. And then more blue in that puddle. Love that. Now the danger with this though, because I've done it so many times, <laughs> is to go too dark and then you're stuck uh, when you add something over top. So you got to be careful. Watercolor has a tendency to dry lighter, which in this case is beneficial. So I'm going to count on that, maybe add a bit of blue here, very lightly. And also a very small amount of incarnate, which is a, a very pinkish, a beautiful pinkish color. You can use shell pink for this. Just mix that in there. Just a tiny bit. Maybe a little bit up top here. I'm working on Arches paper. It's 140 pounds, but it's bright white. The colors really show well on this paper. I love it. I'm going to splash a couple of these dots here. Oh, yeah. Oh, I like that. So I've got like dots in three places there, here, and right there. More there. <laughs> there we go. I'm going to add a 
tiny bit of gold. Okay, maybe I can afford to add a tiny bit more blue. And I'm gonna pick an area here where there's white and I'm gonna add the blue around it. And see how that color wants to run into the water. It's not gonna go where the paper is dry. That's a fun thing to witness. Okay, this has to dry. A bit of an experiment here. I'm gonna use a number 12 round. I don't use large brushes very often, but this is an eight by 10 piece, I believe. So I've got the room for it, and I'm only gonna paint one flower. So what I have here is a lot of that transparent pyro orange. It's a fairly potent color. And I'm going to install one flower and I don't know what kind of flower it's going to end up being I'm just going to do a few gestural swipe and create some petals don't have enough water on my brush that's a very large flower but I'm kind of liking that and I'm also going to add a bit of Indian yellow because these two colors I find play well and I like to mix them Oh yes. Before this is time to dry, I'm going to trace the stem of this and I might even, I think I'm going to trace it with a pencil first and I'm going to use Van Dyke Green and a bit of that Blue Appetite Canyon to create some kind of a blue-green mixture and it will run into the flower which is fine and then i'm just gonna run that down and i'm gonna make it a little larger here at the base and i'm just gonna have a little branch coming off on this side here remove some of the color and then I might just do some kind of a leaf I love how this flower dried it's it's beautifully textured without even me having to put any effort into it that's the beauty of watercolor I guess I want to write something at the bottom here because I'm having a bit of a setback in terms of my creative flow. And what I want to write goes like this. Acknowledge the fears, but don't let them manipulate your creative flow. So I'm going to use that more like a design element to this piece. And I'm going to use my messy long handwriting. It's not going to necessarily be readable. <laughs> it's mainly for me. So I'm going to write... Back. Knowledge. The fears, but don't let them uh, manipulate. Okay, it's not the best. <laughs> Your creative flow. 
I'm going to add, do I hear it? Is it, oh, I hear a faint murmur. Oh. <laughs> yes, I'm gonna be adding gold. So maybe I'll just add them kind of like in a baby's breath pattern, I guess. I do love that. Let's dip in that magic gold. That's not what it's called, it's pale gold. <laughs> For those that are new, that are not in the know, uh, so I'm just gonna drop, drop the dots. Without thinking about, are they perfect? Are they round? Are they, you know, do they look good? It's just a few random dots. Um, I know in a previous video, that same video that I did the flowers in the vase, um, I showed you how to do perfect dots. So if you're looking for a solution to create perfect, like not perfect, I hate that word, round, round dots, um, I'll link in right here in an iCard. You can click on that. That will direct you to the video where I show how to use a stylus to create round dots. But I figure round with this, I don't know, I, I wasn't feeling it. I want to add gold on the lines as well. This is the Fuda Menso brush by Kuretake. I will remember, I will try to remember to leave the link in the description for this brush. Oops, I'm walking right into the gold that I just applied. And then all the way down right here. I think this is where it would make a difference. I like the fact that the quote is breaking down that line. There we go. Oh yeah. So what I've decided to do is use the pencil to add more dots mixed in with the gold and also outline underneath some of these gold dots just to create a bit of contrast. Like so. Then maybe adding some in the background. I'm always looking for opportunities to create contrast. The background is quite light, so I feel like by adding a tiny bit of graphite right underneath or to one side of the dot, it detaches them from the very light background. Some of them are not quite dry yet. Might be a little bit premature on my part to do that. Will I regret? Yeah. <laughs> it's not important. <laughs> No regrets.
There's just playtime, really, when you think about it. I'm playing plenty. <laughs> I've played plenty this week. Uh, there's a few pieces I've done that I was being very precious about them and judging my work a little too much. One of the reasons is that I don't want to have videos that are too long. And when I get lost into details, that's when it creates a problem for me. Right, so I'm going to erase carefully <laughs> some of uh, this line here. And we'll have to go over this word. Maybe add a tiny vein down the center of that leaf. I think we can call it done. Uh, in case you're curious about this tape that I'm using, um, this is actually surgical tape, my 3M. And as you can see, I am pulling on the paper and it is not damaging anything. Some, someone in there, <laughs> in the comments, one of you has suggested to me that trick. Uh, I'll show you what it looks like. I got these tapes on Amazon for way cheaper than the Pro Artist tapes and it works. It doesn't, it holds the paper down, does not damage anything. I did not heat set this prior to removing it and I am so happy. So whoever suggested that, thank you so very much. Here's what it looks like. I'm sure you've seen surgical tape before, but I didn't know that you could use it. Uh, it's transparent. I didn't know you could use it to block your watercolor and hold down your watercolor paper. It comes in a box of 12 and it's by 3M. It's called Micropore surgical tape and uh, cute little, neat little rolls in there. Uh, there's uh, 10 yards of one inch tape per roll. So that's quite a lot. There we go. That flower is really making a statement. I was silently debating whether I should add a few fillers with that color, but I think I'm going to leave it alone. I love the background, the softness of it. Um, of course, I love the gold. <laughs> I don't think I need to say that. And the quilt, which is super subtle. Here, I'll show you from up close. And that's it, my friends. That's it for this week's video. It's not a long project. If you exclude the drying time, you can do this fairly quickly. So give this a shot and practice doing these variegated backgrounds. It's a lot of fun. I used to do that a lot a few years ago and I don't know why I stopped. So I'll probably be using that more in the future. In the meantime, thank you for watching. Thank you, my awesome patrons for supporting my art over at Patreon. That is greatly appreciated. Please be well, stay safe and healthy and creative as well. Don't forget, acknowledge your fears, but don't let them manipulate your creative flow. Very important. I am going to work hard on this too. <laughs> Let's all do it together. Thanks so much for watching. Oh, and don't forget, the list of supplies is always in the description as well as in a pinned comment. Have a nice week and I will see you soon.